Hey everybody, Aaron Bishop here with another Bishop's Blurb. In Romans 11, we read of a process that Gentiles go through when they join themselves to God and to his people. Romans 11, 24. For if you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? The process of joining the kingdom of God is compared to that of branches being grafted from a wild tree to a cultivated tree. And when we read this in the New Testament in Romans chapter 11, we often think of this as a new process, something that only began with Jesus. But this process of grafting Gentiles into the people of God, it's an ancient process. It goes much further back than Romans chapter 11. The clearest example of this is found in the story of the Exodus. When Israel came out of Egypt, it was more than just the sons of Jacob that came with them. Exodus 12, 37-38 And the people of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. A mixed multitude also went up with them, and very much livestock, both flocks and herds. A mixed multitude came out of Egypt with the natural sons of Israel. And we catch glimpses of this mixed multitude throughout the rest of the Torah, but the clearest one that we see is a man known as Caleb. He is highlighted above all the others. In Numbers 13, we read of the spies being sent into the land of Canaan to spy out the land and to figure out where the cities are and where the produce is and which direction they should go as they enter the land. One of the men that we read of was the representative for the tribe of Judah. Caleb, one of the two that came back and gave a positive report of the land. Now, as the representative of the tribe of Judah, we would assume he was a son of Judah. But you'd be wrong. Numbers 32, 11 through 12. Surely none of the men who came out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land that I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. None except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. We read here in Numbers and later in the book of Joshua multiple times, Caleb was a Kenizzite, not from the tribe of Judah. Now was Caleb a Kenizzite or was his father a Kenizzite? It really doesn't matter. What matters is he was not a son of Judah. So what is a Kenizzite? Well, we've read of them before if you've been reading your Bible. Genesis chapter 15 verses 18 through 21. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your offspring I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Caleb was from the land of Canaan. His ancestors occupied the land that they were about to go conquer, and he was one of the two that was faithful to God. He was one of the two that got to enter the land of Canaan in the end. And when it comes to dividing up the land of Israel, in Numbers chapter 34 and in the book of Joshua, we find out that it was Caleb that stood as the representative for the tribe of Judah when the land portions were chosen for the tribes. This man from the land of Canaan, this man who was not a son of Judah, was the representative of the tribe of Judah. He was the one who stood in the place of all of Judah when it came to divvying out the land portions. And if we consider it, there have always been Gentiles that have been grafted into Israel. Rahab, the resident of Jericho, was grafted in Israel because she switched sides at a pivotal moment. Ruth was a Moabitess, and she was grafted into Israel of her own choice when she chose to place the God of Israel and her mother-in-law above her own people. David had numerous Gentiles among his men, including the man that he had murdered, Uriah, who was a Hittite, again, a man from the land of Canaan. And there are many more examples throughout the Old Testament. The point is this, being grafted into Israel is not something that started with the New Testament or with Jesus. There have been cases throughout the Bible of men and women who have joined themselves to Israel by faith and who then become a vital, integral part of the people of God. The ones that I brought up here, they're just some of the most obvious, but they're all throughout the Old Testament. The fact of the matter is, is that being grafted in to Israel is not something that began with Jesus. It is something that has always been a matter 